For the past few years, I've had a very flexible calendar. I've been building and growing my online business, and I do that by myself, so I could work wherever and whenever I wanted to. But recently, I've had a lot more things going on on my calendar. In addition to regularly scheduled things like my Toastmasters public speaking meetings and my personal training sessions with my personal trainer, I also have some things that got added to my schedule. I enrolled in an online course that has regular classes. I have my podcast and I need to schedule recordings for my podcast <laughs> episodes with people. And I also launched a coaching program. And so now I have regular coaching calls with coaching clients. So all of that has made it more and more important for me to schedule my meetings efficiently. And to do that, I use a tool which I want to share with you today called SavvyCal. SavvyCal is a really great scheduling tool. Um, on the podcast, I actually recently had a conversation with the founder of SavvyCal. So if you like the product, or even if you know the product doesn't sound that interesting to you, go listen to that conversation. Um, but what I want to do is show you how I schedule my meetings, how I do that very efficiently, and how I keep space on my calendar as well to do non-meeting things because that's very important as well. This will be particularly useful for those of you who schedule a lot of meetings with people outside of your own organization, okay? So let's jump into the product and then I'll show you what I mean. So here we are looking at a SavvyCal booking link, just so you get a sense of what SavvyCal is all about. There's a bunch of tools like this. Calendly is another one. Acuity Scheduling is another one. And I've used both of those, but I really, really like SavvyCal. Why is that? Let's say I want to chat with someone and I send them this link, okay? This is a demo link. Don't try booking a meeting with me here. It won't work. Um, and someone sees this and it says, hey, let's find a time to meet. You're meeting with Peter Uckies. It's going to take 30 minutes. These are the times that he's available. So they can just click a time and enter their name and email address and click schedule. Okay. This is pretty standard fare for scheduling tools. It's super handy. And I'll show you how I set this up on the back end. Um, but one of the really cool things that you can do in SavvyCal is if I send my booking link to someone and say, hey, let's chat, pick a time on my calendar, right? Um, they can show up on this page and they can click this link, overlay my calendar. And so they can see their own calendar in addition to my availability. That's so helpful. So they can see, hmm, I've got space on Thursday at 1 p.m. Why don't I book a uh, meeting with Peter right here? And this is such a cool feature and no other calendar apps have this at the as of the time that I'm making this video. And this is really why I love SavvyCal um, and why I switched to SavvyCal for my scheduling needs. Okay, so this is what people see. This is how it works. You want to meet with someone, you send them a link and say, hey, pick a time on my calendar. Um, they do, and you get an email notification. Hey, you've got a new meeting, and you know the, the, the meeting shows up on your calendar automatically, of course. So let me actually show you how I've set this up, okay? And what, what example will we use? I mentioned that I have a podcast, and so I need to schedule podcast recordings with people. So I email someone, I reach out to them, and I'm like, hey, would you like to be a guest on the podcast? Let's say they say yes. I'm going to send them a link where they can book a time with me. Now, here's how this is going to work. I'm creating a new scheduling link inside SavvyCal, and I'm going to call it How They Get Stuff Done Podcast Recording. How They Get Stuff Done is the name of my podcast. Um, I'll just empty out the description here. I can edit the URL if I want to, so I can say podcast recording. Uh, this is a demo URL, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, let's set up a few more things, okay? So when I send this URL to people, um, people can um, need to know how long is this meeting gonna be. So the default duration is gonna be 60 minutes. So one of the really cool features in SavvyCal is I can say, hey, I can let people choose how long they want this meeting to be for. So sometimes people only have an hour to chat on the podcast and that's fine. But if I toggle multiple right here, I can say, hey, someone can schedule for 60 minutes or for 90 minutes. That's nice if someone has a little bit more time that if the conversation is good, we can record for a little bit longer rather than having um, getting cut off because they have to move on to their next meeting, okay? Um, I can say here whether this is a single-use link or a multi-use link. Well, since I record episodes with multiple people, it's a multi-use link. Um, I can say which hours am I available to take this kind of meeting, and we'll get more. Um, we'll get to that in a second. So I can say where is this meeting going to happen. So I use a podcast platform called Riverside.fm, and people need to go there, and then we will record the podcast. It's really nice. It records each speaker's audio track locally, and then later on I can edit those together. But that way, if there's like bad internet connection on Zoom or something like that, you don't get those really weird distorted sounds. Um, so super useful. And so the platform is at riverside.fm. This is not, you know, there's a more detailed link, but anyway, I can put that in. And when someone books a meeting, they'll immediately see this. So it's really nice. Now there's a couple more settings that I'm gonna set up for this particular link. I'm gonna go over here to settings. 
and I'm just gonna say configure how this link integrates with my external calendar. So I should explain that. Savvy Cal integrates with my calendar as the person who's sending these links, right? So that's why Savvy Cal knows when am I free, when am I not free. And that's how it can present people options for times that they can book to meet with me, okay? So I want to create the events on my business calendar, yes. And what event name do I have? I want the event name to be link name with attendees. So it's gonna say how they get stuff done, podcast recording with Peter Aki's and the name of the guest. That's how it's gonna appear on my calendar. Um, I can ask people some questions ahead of time if they want to. For example, I can be like, please enter your phone number. Um, we'll do short text and we'll do phone number. So what's your phone number? Well, let's say someone is not there. It'll be helpful to have their phone number so I can give them a call and be like, hey, are you coming to the, <laughs> to the recording or not? Now here's where it really starts being useful to use a calendar tool. I can set buffers and limits. For example, I want there to be X amount of time in between meetings, so before this event, after the event. I wanna have a minimum notice. So for something like a podcast recording, I'm going to want people to book that with me at least two days in advance, so at least 48 hours in advance, because I need some time to do background research on them. Um, and to get ready for the recording, okay? I can also say I wanna limit how far into the future people can book, 60 days is very good there. I can also say limit the scheduling frequency. So for example, I can say, I only want to do one podcast recording a week. Let's say I want a maximum of two. So that's very helpful. Uh, reminder email, this all looks good. Now I can do a post confirmation. So I have a page on my website where it lists what, you know, some instructions that I have for my podcast guests. Because not everybody is comfortable um, being on podcasts, you know, not everybody has a lot of experience. And so these are just some instructions that I want people to read. So I'm just gonna say, after people book that link, uh, or book a meeting with me to record a podcast, just send them to this page and they can read those things. Okay, that's done. Now, if I click preview, this is what it looks like. If someone wants to go and book a podcast with me, they'll see my availability next week and they can just pick a time here and it'd be like how they get stuff done podcast recording. And they can go ahead and choose 90 minutes or 60 minutes depending on what they want and they can fill in their phone number, et cetera. And again, they can overlay their own calendar, which is so useful. So they can quickly see, ah, this time works for me. They don't have to go back and forth the whole time. So. Uh, let's go into the Savvy Cal availability settings. Um, you can make as many links as you want here, by the way. So for example, I also have links for coaching calls. I'll just kind of show how that works. So coaching call. So my coaching calls, um, the ongoing ones are usually 45 minutes. The initial one's usually 90 minutes. And um, those, are usually, those are on Zoom. So I don't have the Zoom integration set up, but I'll, I'll actually show you that because that's very cool. If you go into the settings and you go into integrations, you can actually hook Savvy Cal up to Zoom. So I haven't done that on this demo account, but once you do that, if you go to your scheduling link and to the coaching call, you can choose the location of the meeting to be Zoom here. And then every time someone books a meeting with you, it'll automatically create a meeting event in Zoom as well, you know, with a, with a meeting ID and a password and everything. Super handy, saves you tons, tons of time. So anyway, you can create a, a bunch of links like this, but you need to set up when people can meet with you, right? That's the important thing. So how do I do that? Um, I go into availability. Now, default there is a work hours availability preset and you can have multiple presets. So the work hours availability is just like Monday to Friday, nine to five. And so you can customize that, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a new preset and I'm gonna call it podcast recordings. So let's say that I only want to do podcast recordings on um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And I can say from 11 to 10, somewhere between 11 and 10, I'll say allow and I'll say allow. So this would actually be if I do this a one-time thing, um, but I can add a recurring range. So I can say on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And so now I can go back into my podcast recording link and I can choose the podcast recording preset and then it will only show people availability on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. If I go to the next week, also only on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So this is super convenient. So you can have different kinds of availability for different meetings. So um, going back to availability, your availability, like I said, you can have these recurring patterns, like I'm generally available on Tuesdays and Wednesdays between 11 and 10. And of course, if you have a meeting at that time on your calendar already, Savvy Cal will know that you are not available at that time. But you can also say, you know what? 
um, if I just go to sort of next week and be like, next Tuesday, I know I really want to focus on some other stuff. I don't want anyone to book any meetings with me. I'll just go ahead and, and select a range and say block. Okay, so even though I don't have any meetings on my calendar, I don't want to be available for podcast recordings at this time. And then if I go back to the podcast recording link and I click that and I go to next Tuesday, you'll see that that's no longer available for people to book. Super, super convenient. And you can see that the more meetings you're going to have, the more um, useful this is going to be. Okay, so I just wanna walk through a couple of the settings with you that are really neat. So if I go over to uh, links, uh, we'll set the, this is the default event name. So uh, buffers, I like to have at least an hour before and an hour after each of my events, okay? Um, just because I like to have the time to like, you know, make some tea, relax, go to the bathroom, have lunch, whatever it is that I need to do in between my meetings. So this is just the defaults that I'm setting here and you can customize that um, for different uh, types of meetings. So. I want the minimum notice always to be 48 hours. And SavvyCal really handily tells me that three scheduling links have different buffers. And I'll just say, make them all the same. Um, I always want a one hour reminder, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now the limits I also think is really cool. So in addition to, for example, hey, I only want to do two podcast recordings per week. I also just generally don't want more than two meetings a, a day. So two per day, right? Um, and I can set, uh, maximum number of meetings that I want to have per meet per week and per month as well on top of that. So that's the basics of SavvyCal, the app that I use to schedule my meetings efficiently. And again, this is going to be so useful for those of you who tend to schedule a lot of meetings with people sort of outside of your organization where you don't know what their calendar um, is like, right? You can't see it. Sometimes if you work in a team, you can maybe see their calendar inside your organization's shared Google Calendar or Outlook Calendar or whatever. But if you schedule a lot of meetings with people outside of your organization, you don't know what their calendar is. And this saves so much of the back and forth. No more emails. Hey, can you do Thursday at five? Oh no, but I can do Wednesday at three. Oh, sorry, I can't do Wednesday at three. What can you do? You know that hassle? You won't have that problem anymore whatsoever. And you can control your calendar much more. Now, a tip that I have for you is to keep some days completely free of meetings. For example, in reality, I actually like to keep Tuesdays and Wednesdays free of meetings because that's the days when I'm, I'll be recording my YouTube videos. Um, that's something that I recently instituted because I realized that breaking up my week with like one one or two meetings every day is just killer. So I really need some meeting free days. Now, this is not a sponsored video, but I do have an affiliate link to SavvyCal in the description below the video. So if this product looks cool to you, and if you're like, hey, I would like to use it, then you can use that link to sign up and you'll actually get a month for free. Normally you only get a seven day free trial, but through this link, you'll get a month free trial. And so use that link, it'll help you. It also helps uh, me, it'll support the channel. Really appreciate that. So. Hope you found this a useful video. Let me know what you think of this product and whether you'd like me to do similar explanations of other tools that I use in the future. Um, that would be much appreciated. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Give the video a like and have a great day.